Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's Cone back again here tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer, the show where I recap the NBA games from the night. Yes, the streak is still going. There's a good chance it ends in the next couple of days because I'm very, very busy. But for right now, we're keeping this thing going. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Also, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the new uploads. We've got a couple fun games to go into tonight. There were four games of NBA action that we're going to get into, including one of the most impressive performances I've seen this season. Let's Let's go ahead and get right into it. Obviously, the game I want to really focus on is Mavericks versus Nets. This was a fun one back and forth until overtime where the Mavericks came out on top. And typically, I talk about the losers first, but I don't want to talk about the Brooklyn Nets much more. I've talked about them excessively on this channel through this early portion of the season. So I'll have a quick blurb about how they performed at the end of this section. But let's start off by focusing on the Dallas Mavericks and more importantly, Luka Doncic. Like I said, in tonight's game, Luka had one of the most impressive stat lines of the season, which is saying a lot with how the season has started. We've seen so many insane numbers. We just talked about Giannis having back-to-back -back 40 pieces yesterday, and Luka decided to try and match him. He had 41 points, 11 rebounds, 14 assists and three steals on 50% shooting, and he was a plus 20 in an overtime win. When he was on the court, Brooklyn couldn't do anything about him. He was completely dominant, once again showcasing how weak Brooklyn's defense can be against these dominant opposing players. It didn't matter who was in front of him, whether it was Ben Simmons trying to guard him, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Patty Mills was on him for a weird portion at the beginning of the game, which I don't understand. Another weird decision from Steve Nash. But all in all, Luka Doncic is just incredible. There is nobody in this league that can truly shut him down. And I just want to talk a little bit about how special he is because I feel like similar to Giannis in yesterday's video, we've become really normalized to what Luka does on basically every single night. You know, he went out there and put up a 41 point triple double and I don't feel very phased by it. This feels like something that Luka could do any given night and I'd be like, oh, that's amazing. But you know, that's Luka Doncic. That's what he's going to do. And it's not normal what Luka has come into the league and done over these first five years. And yeah, he's only been in the league five years. At this point, he's not even 24 years old. He doesn't turn 24 until February and he's putting up 40 point triple doubles like it's nothing. He came into the league and immediately in his second season averaged like 28 points per game where he's been hovering around basically his entire career up to this point. And this looks like a season where he could take another leap. It's still early, but through this early going, he's averaging 36 points per game. He's been dominant. He's been efficient. He looks locked in. He looks like he's ready to continue making that push. He made it to the Western Conference Finals last year. And with the way Luke is playing right now, the Mavericks feel like they have a chance to try and make another similar run. However, I still don't feel great about the team around him. Supporting cast is probably the sole reason why Luka Doncic doesn't have an MVP award to his name at this point. If he had a great supporting cast and he was like a one seed, there's a pretty good chance Luka would have some hardware. I'm still confident he's going to win some. In fact, I would put money that he wins multiple MVPs over the course of his career. But all in all, I still worry about the supporting cast. It's high variance. They shoot a lot of threes. I like what Christian Wood has brought to the team. He was good in this one, albeit a little more limited than he's been in past games. He's been putting up 20 consistently. In this one, he had just over double digits, didn't shoot too much. He really didn't have to when Luka was doing what he was tonight. But I like what he's brought to the game. I still feel like he needs a better second option for them to truly become championship contenders. But then again, when you have Luka Doncic, basically anything's possible. But talking about this game in particular, it was a full showcase of Luka's arsenal, you know, hitting a step back three here, hitting a pull up mid range jumper here, a tough floater, and along the way, making some of the most ridiculous passes you will ever see, bullying his way to the rim, being really slow and methodical. And that's one of the biggest things that feels super unique about Luka's game. He's not like this phenomenal athlete, at least compared to other NBA players, you know, compared to like me, Luca is like the greatest athlete of all time but he is one of those players that is so unassuming on the court. He doesn't feel like your typical NBA superstar. He's someone that's really slow, methodical, not this incredible athlete. And that's kind of something we've seen, you know, over the past few years with a Nikola Jokic. There's a lot of players in the league that are so unique that are really incomparable to any player. Luka's probably most clear comparison is James Harden. But even then, James Harden wasn't doing what Luke is doing right now when he was 23 years old. He wasn't putting up like 30, 40 point triple doubles on any given night, he just wasn't doing that. 
I'm not saying Luka is going to go down as better than Harden all time, although I wouldn't be surprised if he makes that case, but he's doing stuff at an earlier age than we've seen most players do in history. There aren't many players that have made an impact this early. In fact, I would argue that he's probably one of only a few players in league history that has been this good right away. In his second season, he was already an MVP caliber player. We don't ever see that. I feel like we take that for granted a lot with how great Luka has been. And I was thinking about this the other day and even today watching him play. It's hard to believe, and I don't know how I'm going to explain to people, you know, my kids someday, how Luka went third overall in the 2018 draft. You know, I, I talked about this with a couple of people the other day because Luka was going off, and I talked about it again today with my brother. You know, DeAndre Ayton going to the Suns, I get it. He's been good so far, but God, Kings fans have to be completely kicking them. Marvin Bagley has been solid so far in his career, but now he's on the Pistons. They didn't even have him for like three, four years. Luka is a continuous MVP candidate. He's going to go down as one of the best players of all time, and really just one of the greatest offensive forces we've ever seen in the league. There are very few players in league history that are able to create points for himself as well as others in the fashion that Luka does. He's able to single-handedly will an offense to a win. That's not something you see every day. It's incredible to see. People are going to talk about, you know, oh, he's not the greatest defender, whatever. I don't really care. I believe that Luka Doncic is a player that's going to go down as one of the greatest to ever play the game. Similar to Giannis, don't take him for granted because by the time you do, Luka is going to be older. And I know he's only 23 right now, but it feels like time flies with these players' careers. I just feel super blessed to watch a player like him as he begins to enter his prime. And that's probably the craziest part. Luka's not even in his prime yet. Like I said, he's 23 years old. Most players peak around like 27, 28. He still has a few years to go up till that point. It just blows me away. Uh, if there's any player that's going to try and challenge LeBron James for his scoring title at the end of his career, I think Luke is a guy that could start to make that case. Of course, you need incredible longevity to get there, and that's a very long way for Luka, but the numbers that he's putting up early, it looks like he's going to be on a lot of the all-time leaderboards, points, assists, hell, maybe even rebounds with the way that he grabs them off the rim, especially amongst guards. Luke is just an incredible force. I feel like I have to see him play in person at some point if there are any Mavericks fans out there or people that have seen Luca play let me know how that experience was because I really want to go see him play uh, he was in New York City tonight where I'm currently at he was playing at Barclay Center against the Nets it just it didn't work out I've got a lot of stuff going on right now busy with a lot of things but at some point I do want to go see him hoop and I feel like that would be an incredible experience very quickly on the net side of things Kyrie Irving was in his bag somehow more than he typically is tonight he had 39 points and really heated up towards the end. Kevin Durant had a 30 bomb too. Ben Simmons, maybe the best game of his season so far, but they still need him to be better. He did make a great play getting a steal on Luka at the end of regulation that helped them send the game to overtime. But all in all, they still need more aggression from him. He made the first bucket of the game and I was like, oh, are they really going to start, you know, utilizing him more? And then it was the same old stuff. So I don't know at this point. I guess we'll see with Ben Simmons. There was a clip going around of him airballing a layup. I'm just going to assume his back is still bothering him because I refuse to believe that that's something that an NBA player, especially one that was of his caliber recently, just did naturally. Heading into other matchups, the Thunder took down the Clippers for the second time in three days tonight. Uh, as a Thunder fan, super stoked about this one. Shea continues to look great. He probably had his worst game of the season and he still put up 24, 5, and 6 despite having four fouls by halftime. He did a great job of managing foul trouble. He looks much better defensively than he ever has in his career, just continuing to look absolutely dominant, averaging around 29 points per game through this early stretch of the season. Lou Dort, who's really struggled so far, had a bounce back game with 21 points, three rebounds, and four assists, while completely clamping Paul George. He got absolutely nothing to go tonight, and Dort was the big reason why. Trey Mann looked great too, hitting some tough threes. Poku hit some dagger threes as well. He had a really solid game. Aaron Wiggins had a double-double. Just a bunch of guys having really solid performances in this one. It was great to see. Really fun to see this young team go out there and hoop. I can't stop imagining what they'd look like with Chet, and I'm starting to believe that if we had Chet, we'd be a bona fide playing team. As for the Clippers, like I said, this is now back-to-back -back L's to Oklahoma City, a team that, you know, were supposed to be one of the rebuilding teams in the league. I know the first game they were without Paul George, Mark Marcus Morrison, Kawhi Leonard, and they got blown out. 
understandable. But in this one, they did get Paul George back, still missing Kawhi Leonard and Marcus Morris. But you have to imagine the Clippers really wanted this one. They didn't end up getting it. They were throwing out a lot of full court presses, a lot of double teams on Shea. And that worked sometimes, but the Thunder were honestly just knocking down threes at a crazy clip tonight. There wasn't much they could do. Like I said, Paul George got clamped by Lou Dort. He only had 10 points. Zubats was once again very, very good. He continues to dominate us without having a true big man. Norman Powell had 21 points, but probably the player of the game for LA was John Wall, who had 17, 4, and 6. He looks great to start this season. He looks exactly like the point guard the Clippers need. He looks a lot faster than he's looked in past years, probably a byproduct of him resting last season. He was looking great playmaking wise, you know, like I said, quick first step, athletic, his jump shot has looked pretty reliable up to this point. I really like what I've seen from John Wall for the Clippers. And if he continues to play like this, it goes a long way to the Clippers trying to make a championship run. Then we had Heat versus Warriors where Golden State got the dub. They really ran away with this one late. Steph Curry is a monster. He had 33, seven and nine, continuing a very early MVP campaign. Andrew Wiggins had 18 and 10, continues to make an impact Every single second he's in the game, I love what Wiggins has done with his career over there in Golden State. Clay continues to be pretty inconsistent. He started this one really rough, got better by the end of the game, but even still, Clay has to be better than that. He's got to kind of find his footing. Also, we saw no run for Jonathan Kuminga in this one. He was a DNP coach's decision. So you have to think maybe he's going to get some G League run at some point, which is surprising for a player of his caliber. But then again, the Warriors are a really deep team. They've got a lot of guys who deserve minutes. So it's not the most surprising thing, but just something to keep an eye on going forward. On the Heat side of things, they honestly just couldn't keep up offensively. Tyler Hero only had seven points. And if that's the case, regardless of how everyone else plays, you're probably not going to win if you're the Heat. They just don't have a lot of reliable guys to get buckets. Jimmy Butler was phenomenal. He had 27, six and eight, while Bam Adebayo had 26 and eight. They were both great. They both made a huge impact. And if they get performances like this, most nights they're probably going to win. But when you go up against Golden State, you need more offensive firepower. They just weren't getting it from the other guys. Lowry was decent tonight again. But like I said, at Tyler Hero putting up seven points. They need more from him. Overall, it's still the problem of the Heat feel like they need more. They still need a starting power forward. They can't keep running Caleb Martin out there all season, or it's going to be a rough year because now after this loss, they're two and four in the season. You can't like that if you're a Heat fan. And finally, we had Kings versus Grizzlies with Memphis running away with this late in the game. The Kings, I feel like they tricked me. I bought into the hype heading into the season. I like their off season, picking up shooters like Kevin Herter and Malik Monk. Sabonis and Fox looked pretty fun last season. Keegan Murray is, you know, he's already looking like an early rookie of the year guy, but even so, it doesn't matter. They have not been good up to this point. De'Aaron Fox is putting up career numbers, but nobody's really helping him consistently outside of like maybe Keegan Murray. Sabonis has to be better. They traded Tyrese Halliburton for him and Halliburton is completely going off. He already looks like the better player of the two to start this season. Sabonis has not been great defensively. That's never been his strong suit, but he's also not putting up numbers offensively. If he's doing neither of those things, he really just isn't contributing much on the court. They need him to be a lot better than he has been. And if not, things are going to continue to go south for the Kings, who are now 0-4 on the season. They had playing hopes. I bought into them, and I feel like they tricked me. Finally, on the Grizzlies side of things, the main guy I want to highlight is Desmond Bain. He had 31 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists. He's now hit the second most threes this season, only behind Steph Curry. He's been so, so good. To me, it feels like he's like a young Klay Thompson in the making. I'm not saying he's going to reach the shooting level or the defensive level of Klay Thompson, but he has a very similar feel to his game, in my opinion, having a great point guard to play off of when John Morant goes a long way, but he's also able to really create his own shot. He locks up defensively. He does a bit of everything. I've been really impressed with what I've seen from Desmond Bain early in the season. And if I had to pick all-stars right now, Desmond Bain is probably on that all-star team. That's how good he's been. And I wouldn't be surprised if by the all-star break, he's still in that conversation, which is a huge win for this Grizzlies team that has one of the best player development staffs in the league. I keep saying this on this channel, but he was a guy that was looked at by most people as too old of a prop prospect. He went late in the first round because, you know, everyone was like, oh, he's probably going to be good, but there's not much room for him to improve and develop. He's proved all those people wrong, and it's been super fun to watch. So shout to Desmond Bain. Also shout to Jake LaRavia, another guy who they got him in this past year's draft, and he already looks like a steal. He had 13 and 9, contributing at a high level, knocking down some threes. Just the Grizzlies continue to find steals in the draft, and I don't know how they do it. That's all I have to say about tonight's slate of games. Make sure to leave a like,
like and subscribe if you enjoy and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Also, go ahead and comment down below letting me know your biggest takeaways from your team season so far and from any of these teams that I talked about their season so far. Also, comment down below your favorite performance of the night. Mine was easily Luca's, but there are a lot you can take away from. Shout to Lou Dort in particular. But as always, I really appreciate y'all. Y'all are the best. Thank you for all the support you've shown on this channel. Uh, maybe a chance there won't be one on Saturday if there's not going to be an after the buzzer. I'll try and drop a video during the day so there still is some content for you guys. We're going to keep the upload streak going at least. But for right now, I will see you all later. Real one, say it back.